Jeffrey Wright was recently saying that they all sort of compare notes about <laughs> what everyone knows on Westworld. But is it helpful to have have these actors sort of know where, where they're going or is it helpful to have them in the dark? What's your sort of take on that, Lisa? You know, I think it depends and I think it depends on the part that they're playing. And so for, for Westworld, we had a kind of embedded timeline, right, where... Uh, William was the man in black. Um, and so you're seeing him as a young man and you're also seeing him as an older man. And for us, we just thought, well, what's the point in telling Jimmy Simpson, who's William, that he's going to be this guy? Like, just let him play this part. But on the other hand, for somebody like uh, Jeffrey Wright's character, he's playing two people, basically. Arnold and then the robot version of Arnold Bernard. And each one, he's such a gifted actor, in order to kind of modulate his performance, we would tell him, okay, now this is you in this timeline and this is different. So case by case. And will season two, is it something, again, that you will keep certain characters in the dark? I will or? also tell you on a need-to-know basis. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I planned all of this. No, you didn't. You can even see the steps you're supposed to follow. You recruit other host to help you. Then you to make your way to the train. Then when you reach the main... Watch it. No one's controlling me. I'm leaving. I'm in control. Lisa, early in your career, you had a writer turn to you and say, you know, you're a diversity hire, so I'm not sure you need to speak up. People don't really need to hear from you. How did that experience inform uh, how you approached the job then and going forward? I honestly think in some ways she was trying to be helpful. Uh-huh. You know, <laughs> like I think it was, don't feel any pressure. Nobody expects anything from you. It was my first job. I came from a completely different industry and I think meant as a pep talk. Um, <laughs> uh, and, How'd that go? And it just, you know, it, it was one of those unnerving things where, and, and it's kind of why I, I consciously chose to talk about, you know, being a diversity hire for the first job because people tend to discount, like, oh, that means, oh, you're not really, you were chosen for some, to fill some quota. And it's just not the case, you know, mm-hmm. there, minorities are underrepresented. People from not even necessarily racial or in terms of gender, it's really hard to get a job as a writer, and especially hard if you don't have like a kind of socioeconomic safety net mm-hmm. to become a writer's assistant and work for like six years in the hopes that you can get that one script, you know? And so programs like that really help, you know, bring new voices to the table, not just people of color, not just women, but also, you know, people of different backgrounds. And I think that's really important. And so, you know, when she told me that, I was, of course, horrified that I had been talking too much, as I am right now. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I think you just have to double down in the end. And you say, well, you know what? Everybody's going to think that, or half the population is going to think that. But regardless of what they think, I have this toehold into this mm-hmm. opportunity, and I need to kind of blast the doors off of it, or else it's going to slam right back on me. <laughs> and then one of the things you did from there was go and work on very male shows. I mean, you right. worked on a burn notice, which is a, it's very much a sort of a male voice, and presumably the room was also heavy on males. I mean, that was presumably a conscious decision on your part. Right, yeah. I wanted to uh, be able to say, you know, nobody ever has a problem if a man writes a woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I wanted to be able to say, well, I can write your men too, and I can write your action. You know, and it, you don't just have to give me the love scenes, which mm-hmm. technically I don't even think are my strong <laughs> suit. So um, it was just about that. It was about trying to take as many topics and saying they're not off limit for me or people like me. How hard is it to say no? I mean, is that something that's in your vernacular? Can you do that? Do you have the confidence to say no? For me, it touches a little on what Ava was talking about, too. And and you guys have all done amazing things that have your voice. And they're really distinctive and singular and, and wonderful, you know? And there is that pressure not only to be prolific, but to not fuck up, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. especially when you kind of feel the added burden of, I'm a woman who's doing this now. You know, I represent this. And also, I represent opportunities for other women mm-hmm. and other people of color, you know? And, and I'm trying to start my own kind of movement and the pressure to just, you know, really watch over your baby and shepherd it throughout. And I know this is for everybody who cares about their product, but it's, so you're kind of counterbalancing that with your ability to take on more and more projects Mm -hmm. and somewhere in between there's a, there's a good balance. Hi. What's up, YouTube? What's up? I'm Ewan McGregor. Billy Bob Thornton. Ryan Murphy. Thanks Thanks for watching The Hollywood Hollywood Reporter. Reporter on YouTube. 
Hold on. Make sure to dis see. I can't even read either. Make sure to subscribe for more stuff and things. Cool. All right. How's that? <laughs>